What's up everyone? So a few weeks ago I was lucky enough to get asked by um, Chris Carl, who has a photography podcast to uh, do an interview and go on his podcast. Um, it was a super cool thing and I'm really glad that I got to do it. At the end of the podcast um, he gave me a little challenge. He said to me, or he sent me the challenge of trying to do an editorial style shoot with a female model wearing all black and shooting black and white. Um, so I accepted the challenge and this video is about that. So for this shoot, I was working with a model um, who, or oh, my friend, Jess. So she's only been sort of in front of the camera a couple of times um, over the past few years and that's about it. So it was good fun to catch up with her and do some shooting. So for this challenge, I decided to use my Pentax 6.7 and I had the 55mm F4, the 105mm f2.4 and the 135 f4 macro. Um, the film that I chose to shoot was Ilford XP2 because I had two rolls of that and everything else I had I didn't have two rolls of the same film. I had like HP5, FP4, Pan F, um, Tri-X, um, Acros but I only had one of each of those films whereas XP2 I had two. So um, there might have been a little bit of a problem uh, with the film when I got it developed. I'm not sure if the lab um, accidentally developed it as black and white rather than C41 process. Um, I could see it happening because, you know, they're pretty busy. They were, it took a little while to get to me, so I'm assuming it was a very busy week for them. And, you know, it's just an Ilford film. It looks like a black and white, so for it to get mixed in with the other black and whites could happen. Um, the reason I say this is the results that I got weren't like Ilford XP2 that I've shot before. Um, normally when you get a back XP2, it's very clean, um, just because of the processing, it's very like fine grain, it's really nice. Um, the photos here, they're not too bad, um, and I think the grain and stuff that's added to them, if it was developed wrong, or maybe if I got the exposures wrong, kind of adds to, the, to it a little bit. Um, I don't think I would've got my exposures too wrong. I have my Sekonic with me. Uh, worst comes to worst, I would've been maybe one stop out because I might've forgot to change the ISO from say 200 to 400, but it shouldn't have made the results too much difference. I mean, one stop overexposed or leaning slightly towards overexposed is still not too bad with black and white film. So the photos might not look too bad um, in this video if you're watching on a smaller um, device or just on a laptop, but when I opened them up on my, um, my monitor to edit, they just had a lot of grain, um, they just didn't have as much detail going on, there was just some funky sort of muddy shadows and some other stuff. Um, but yeah, in the end it didn't work out too bad. So one of the things that I wanted to work on with this shoot was movement. I've been sort of interested in doing a lot of slow shutter speeds and then getting uh, the model or whoever to like shake their head or move their arms or their hands or something like that to introduce a little bit of movement. Um, it's something that I've really found interesting lately. So with this one here, there's quite a few shots that have um, movement in them. Uh, some of them didn't quite work out, but you know, it's all fun to experiment. You know, you make mistakes, things don't quite work out how they should. Um, but that's the fun of film photography, I think. I think a lot of people get a bit too serious and they want everything to be perfect, and I understand that, but you know, sometimes mistakes happen and it's not the end of the world. So for this shoot, we went to a place called Honeymoon Pool. It's a, um, inside a valley, there's like from a dam, a river, and it's a camping area. And there's a nice little trail walk around there. Um, it's normally pretty dark because it's in the valley, so the light drops off pretty quick. Um, lots of trees sort of really dense, like wet looking sort of forest. Um, so it gave kind of like an ominous sort of spooky vibe to the shoot. That coupled with the movements um, make the photos look a little bit ghostly and the black and white. So overall, I quite like the way that the whole thing turned out, the vibe that you get from the photos, and just sort of like the ghostly sort of nature to it. There's a fun little shoot. Um, so I've just put together a little video from some stuff there. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the photos and the video and I'll be back to talk a bit more after that.
I hope you guys like the black and white photos from Honeymoon Pool. Um, after this, I thought, you know, we'd just go shoot a roll of colour somewhere because I didn't want Jess just to have only black and white photos. I wanted her to have um, some colour as well and I knew that the results from the colour would be super crisp, super nice and clean and something that she'd like. Um, so on the way back when we were driving, we found a nice little spot, a few trees, it was just off the side of the highway, really easy to get to. Um, and we took some colour photos there. Uh, with that, I used Lomography 800, um, and I think the results are really nice, so I hope you guys enjoy those. So overall, I'm pretty happy with how the shoot turned out. There were a few mistakes, um, some photos which I just completely made mistakes on. You know, everyone does it. The first photo of the day, I forgot to adjust my shutter speed. So the first photo was taken at um, half a second. Um, and there's a couple of shots that came back and the exposure was just like either way off or something happened in the processing or something, but I'm assuming it's exposure from the way it looks. But yeah, so you know, mistakes were made. It's not the end of the world. I'm probably, I would be keen to try another shoot there, similar style, um, and try to see if we get some different results, maybe with some like HP5 push to 1600 or something, that grittiness, that contrastiness. Looks pretty cool, try to integ integrate some movements and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, the results not turning out quite how I expected. You know, not too bad, but it's done one thing for me. I really want to start developing my own film and jumping in and just taking control and you know, getting a lot of the results that I want by learning the developer and the film that I use. So I've got a few bits and pieces now for developing my black and white and scanning, which was the biggest problem. So I think from now on, I'm going to be scanning a lot of 35 mil in the black and white. And then from there, move into all my medium format and then color and hopefully get a really good workflow and I'll just be 100% independent, no labs needed. Also, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Chris Carl um, for giving me this challenge and having me on the podcast. It was amazing to be, um, you know, looked at for something like that. He's had some amazing photographers. Um, I would highly recommend that you check it out. It's the Chris Carl Photography Podcast. Um, I'll leave his socials and details in the description below. But if you're into film photography, um, any sort of genre of digital photography or just photography in general, give it a listen. He's had some amazing people on there, some good film YouTubers, um, great photographers, and it's an amazing podcast. I love listening to it when I'm out on photo walks and just gets me inspired to go do things. So definitely go check that out. Um, and just, yeah, another big shout out to uh, Chris Carl because awesome podcast and I can't believe I got to do something with that so many amazing people have done. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please give us a subscribe. It will really help. Um, I've got a giveaway video, which was my last one. So if you want to be able to win a, uh, or get yourself an Olympus uh, Mew 2, go check that out. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one.